Hi, it's Anna Kaiso. Today's class is dedicated to joy. So grab your yoga blanket or your bath towel and let's get started. Let's begin with a warm up. Bring your feet about hip width apart and squat. Perhaps just a little wider than hip width. Keep your back straight. And as you come up, squeeze your legs and your buttocks. And now let's bring our arms into the movement. Inhale as you go down and bring your arms up and exhale as you come up and bring your arms down. Inhale, exhale. And go at your own pace. But bring a feeling of joy into the movement. Feel glad to be warming your body up. Feel glad that you're taking care of your body. One more time. Good. Now let's bring our hands behind our head, interlacing the fingers. Inhale and bring the elbows backward, opening the chest. Exhale, elbows forward. Inhale. Stretch and open the chest. Exhale. Don't let your lower back overarch. A few more times. Excellent. Now let's bring the left arm in front of us in a 90 degree angle and wrap the right arm under and around into eagle arms position. Keep your upper arms horizontal and push your elbows forward to stretch the upper back and release. Now bring the right arm in front of you and wrap the left arm under and around. If your palms don't touch, you have the option of touching the backs of the hands or bring your hands to the shoulders. And push the elbows forward. And don't forget to breathe. And release. Begin to twist your pelvis and keep your shoulders in one place. Use your abs to control this movement. This warm up gets the abs warmed up and also the spine. And now the shoulders, keep the pelvis in its place. Don't let the pelvis move with the shoulders. And breathe. Great. And just a few wrist circles and to the opposite direction. Great. Let's get started with our first pose. I'd like to begin with Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon pose. It's very important for us to bend the spine in all directions and this pose gives us a nice lateral sideways bend. 
Step your feet together. Inhale and circle your arms up. Come to the balls of your feet and interlace your thumbs. Exhale and bend to the left. Don't allow your spine to round or bend or twist. Let the movement be only to the side. Relax the shoulders. And reach tall through the crown of your head, not so much through the hands. Your right heel and hip can be a little bit higher than the left. This is actually good because it gives us a nice even arc. Breathe with your belly and feel joyful power coming into your body as you mentally affirm strength and courage fill my body cells. Strength and courage fill my body cells. Let's exit now. Inhale and come back to upright. Stretch tall. Exhale and circle your arms down. Step your feet under your hips. And take a moment in Tadasana, the standing mountain pose, to feel the effects of this pose. Now let's repeat on the other side, bring the feet together again. Circle your arms up as you inhale, come to the balls of your feet, interlace the thumbs the other way now, exhale and bend to the right. Imagine you're in between two panes of glass. Keep the heels off the floor if you can. You always have the option of keeping a blanket under your heels to help you balance or do this pose against the wall. If this is tough on your shoulders or if you have cardiovascular disease, of course you can bring your hands to the heart or you can try a variation like this. Squeeze your legs together and let the courage and joyful power Infuse your body as you mentally affirm. Strength and courage fill my body cells. And let's inhale, stretch tall and exhale. Relax our arms down. Step our feet to hip width apart. And pause for a moment to notice what's going on in the body. Bring the energy you are awakening inward and upward to the point between the eyebrows. And let's now move on to the next pose, which is Trikonasana, the triangle pose. It's a very vitalizing and energizing pose. Let's step our feet wide, about three to four feet. Turn your left foot out from the hip joint, about 90 degrees. Here, your pelvis may turn a little bit to the left, which is okay. But in that case, bring your right toes in a little bit or drop the heel down so that your toes are pointing in the same direction as your hip. This way, we'll avoid twisting the knee. Keep the left leg engaged so that you are not overextending the knee. Now check that your left heel is pointing straight at the middle of the instep of the right foot. Face your chest forward and bring your arms, palms up to horizontal. Inhale and reach to the left, 
folding at the hip joint as far as you can go. Now hold your upper body in this position as you exhale and drop your left arm straight down. Inhale and bring your right arm to point upwards. Don't let your upper body sag. And if your neck is healthy, tuck your chin in and rotate your head to look up to the right hand. It's a very invigorating pose. Tuck your pelvis in if you have a tendency to sway back. Don't place any weight on your knee. Keep breathing smoothly and naturally. And feel yourself opening to joy that needs no outside cause. Joy that is always within you as you mentally affirm. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. To exit, bend your knee. Inhale and push yourself up. Bring your arms up. Exhale and relax your arms down, rotating your toes back to point forward. Let's pause in this wide stance for a moment. Enjoy the energy in your body. And keep drawing it in to your spine and up to the point between the eyebrows. And now let's repeat on the other side. Rotate your right foot out 90 degrees from the hip joint. And make sure that your hip joint here and the toes are pointing in the same direction. So drop the heel or bring the toes in of the left foot if needed. Let's check that the heel is pointing at the instep of the left foot and engage your right leg. Face your chest forward and bring your arms to horizontal. Inhale and reach to the right as far as you can go, folding at the hips. Exhale and drop your right arm straight down and inhale to bring your left arm up. Tuck your pelvis in as needed and rotate your head to look up if your neck is healthy. Keep the right leg engaged and press down on both feet to further energize this pose. Relax your shoulder. Keep filling your body with joy as you mentally affirm. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. Keep your breath smooth and natural. Know that you can always come out of a pose if you need to. And let's exit now. Bend your right knee. Inhale. So you push yourself up. Exhale and rotate your toes to point forward and relax your arms down. Let's step our feet under our hips now. Pause and feel. Where do you feel energy awakening? What does it feel like? Stay open to this energy.
and withdraw this energy inward and upward with willingness. Our next pose is Parahastasana, the jackknife pose. Keep your feet hip width apart. And as you may remember, this pose has two phases. The first active phase where we keep our back straight and the second relaxation phase where we let the back relax and bend forward. If you have any spinal issues, stay in the first active phase. In the first phase, also as we come into the uh, forward bend without bending the spine, keep really good spinal awareness so that you can uh, feel that the back is in its natural curves in the same way it is right now as you're standing up. So let's inhale, circle the arms up, stretch tall and exhale, bending at the hips, circle your arms to your thighs, and keep the back straight. Go as far as you can until you start noticing your lower back beginning to round. Use your hands to help yourself lengthen the spine and reach forward through the crown of your head. So here we are in the active phase of the jackknife pose. And breathe smoothly and naturally. If it feels more comfortable for you, you can bend your knees a little bit. And now Inhale and lengthen your spine forward and exhale, release your upper body and your head toward the floor. Bring your hands to the floor, your legs, or you can wrap your three first fingers around the big toes. Point your sit bones upward toward the ceiling and let the upper body relax completely. And here you can also bend your knees for a lower back release if you'd like. Keep the knees slightly bent, don't let them lock or and overextend. You can imagine that which, with each inhalation, you're feeling the areas where you feel the stretch with light and space. This pose releases tension in the hamstrings and in the lower back. Feel that as you release this tension, you are replacing it with joyful freedom. Mentally affirm, nothing on earth can hold me, nothing on earth can hold me. Now let's exit. Bend your knees and straighten your back. Inhale and push yourself up. Circle your arms overhead. Stretch tall and exhale and circle your arms down. Pause in Tadasana for a moment to enjoy the effect of this pose. Continue to move the energy you have released into the spine 
and up the spine to the point between the eyebrows. To the seat of concentration and joy. Now let's move on to the floor for our next pose, Bhujangasana, the Cobra Pose. Lay down on the mat, on your belly. Bring your hands beside your chest. Reach back with your toes and press your pubic bone on the floor. Inhale and lift your head. But don't jackknife the head. Exhale. Inhale. Now lift your chest up. Exhale. And now finally inhale one more time. And come up as much as you can. And now keep the breath flowing. Don't push yourself up much with your hands. Keep them there to support and stabilize you. And reach up through the crown of your head and reach back with the toes. Keep your elbows close to your body. Breathe smoothly and naturally. Avoid straining. Feel that there are no obstacles, only opportunities, as you mentally affirm. I rise joyfully to greet each new opportunity. I rise joyfully to greet each new opportunity. couple more breaths. It's good to challenge yourself sometimes, but do avoid straining. And now let's inhale, reach up through the crown of your head and exhale, slowly lower yourself down. You can turn your head to one side. Or use your hands as a pillow. You notice the energy, especially in your spine. Enjoy this energy. And withdraw it deeper into the spine. And willingly move it upward to the point between the eyebrows. Now, well, let's come to our hands and knees to tabletop position. We're going to do Adho Mukha Svanasana, the downward dog pose. Your knees are hip width apart, right under your hips. Your hands are also shoulder width apart, but place them further forward so that they are at the level of the crown of the head. Press down through the entire hands, the palms and the fingers, and tuck your toes in. Inhale, and as you exhale, Lift your buttocks up, reach up through the sit bones. Here, it's more important to keep the back straight than the legs. So if you notice your back is rounding, bend the knees. This is especially important if you have any spinal issues. 
The heels do not have to touch the floor, but lengthen upward through your shoulders. Don't sag on the shoulders. Keep them open and broad. Keep your ears alongside your biceps and lengthen up through the sit bones. Breathe smoothly and naturally. It's not always easy to feel, but there's a calming effect to this pose. Give that calmness also your joy and mentally affirm. Calmness radiates from every fiber of my being. Calmness radiates from every fiber of my being. And let's exit. Inhale, reach up with the sit bones and exhale. Bring the knees to the floor. You can pause in extended child's pose or any comfortable seated position. If your buttocks are not touching the heels, you can place some blankets or cushions underneath. You can also place your hands under your forehead if that's more comfortable. Let's move directly from here to child's pose. Bring your hands alongside your body with your palms up and forehead touching the floor. Again, you can have your hands under your head if this is more comfortable. Also, you can spread your legs a little bit more if that's more comfortable, if you need some space there. Withdraw inward. Find a calm center there. Find a calm center in yourself. And silently affirm. I withdraw from outer involvement into my inner haven of peace. If you're able to keep your right big toe on top of the left, Withdraw also all the energy from your limbs into the spine, into the point between the eyebrows.
Now bring your hands next to your knees, inhale, and push yourself up. Our final pose for today is Setu Pandasana, the bridge pose. It's an inversion and a great way to end uh, any yoga practice as it brings energy and blood to the brain. For these kinds of inversions where we place weight on the neck, I like to use blankets. So grab your blanket or your towel and place it on the mat. Lay down on the mat and the blanket so that your head is off the blanket, but your shoulders are on the blanket. So there's about two to three inches between the shoulders and the edge of the blanket or the towel. Bend your knees so that they're about six to 12 inches away from the buttocks, so that you can almost reach them with your hands. Keep your hands alongside your body. Tuck your pelvis in. This protects the lower back from overarching as we lift up to the pose. Inhale and press with your feet to lift your buttocks up. Stay here if you have any spinal injuries or vulnerabilities. Otherwise, interlace your fingers and roll your shoulders under one by one. Again, if your shoulders are up for it. This helps you lift the pelvis higher up. Lift upward with the pelvis and the heart and keep the calves vertical. Don't let the knees play. Keep them hip width. Press down with your head and reach up. Imagine that you are offering yourself everything that you are to infinite goodness. Affirm silently, I offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. Keep your breath flowing. And now let's exit, release your hands and your shoulders and exhale. Lower your spine down one vertebra at a time, like a string of pearls. And rest in Shavasana. Enjoy the effects of this pose and continue to consciously draw energy inward and upward. Now let's roll onto our right side and push yourself up. We will go into deep relaxation in Shavasana. You can remove the blanket, cover yourself with the blanket, or use it to place under your knees.
lay down on the mat. Into Shavasana. Your feet slightly wider than hip width and your arms, palms up in about 45 degree angle from the body. Let go of all muscle movement, all tension, and allow the floor to completely support your body. Relax as fully as you can. To help us relax the body, let's visualize light in all our body parts, starting with the feet, all the way to the crown of the head. Let's start with the left foot. Imagine it being filled with light. Now the right foot. left calf, visualize it being filled with light, right calf, left thigh, and right, left buttock, and right. Lower back. Upper back. The abdominal muscles. left chest, right chest, fill it all with light. Left hand, right hand, left forearm, and right. Left upper arm and right. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Front and back of the neck. your face and your scalp. Visualize your entire body being infused with light, purifying your body and letting go of all tension Radiate this light around you into the room.
Now let's come back into the body. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Move your legs, your arms, gradually making the movement bigger. Stretch your arms. And bring your knees to your chest. You can give your back a nice massage here. Roll onto your right side. Pause for a moment. And push yourself up. Let's find a comfortable seat for brief meditation. <sighs> Sit upright on the chair, on a cushion or yoga blanket, or with a meditation bench. Place your hands, palms up on your thighs, close to the junction of the thighs and abdomen. Keep your chin level, your shoulders relaxed, and let the belly do all the work as you breathe. Breathe through your nose. Uplift your gaze behind closed eyes. Slightly above horizontal to help us concentrate. Don't control the breath. Let it flow on its own accord. Concentrate on the air flowing in your nose at the point where you can feel the air flowing most clearly. to help us bring more joy into our lives, no matter what the circumstances. We can use an affirmation. We have been using affirmations with our poses, but these affirmations can be used also in any moments in everyday life. Words have the power to manifest themselves if you give them that power. This affirmation is from the book Affirmations for Self-Healing by Swami Kriyananda. And it's an affirmation for joy. Mentally, Affirm with conviction, with energy, with power. I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. 
I know that joy is not outside me, but within. I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. I know that joy is not outside me, but within. I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. I know that joy is not outside me, but within. Know that you have this joy within you in every moment, even in difficult times. Being joyful and cheerful is a matter of choice. Not always an easy choice, but it's there. Feel joy in your heart and let it radiate into your entire body. To your loved ones and into the world. Take a deep breath in and out. Gently open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's not always easy to feel joyful and that choice is not as easy to make as we would like, but use this affirmation, use these yoga poses, to help you find that joy again and again when you need to. Every situation has something positive about it, even if it's hard to see at times, but difficult times, they give us strength, they make us better people, they make us more caring, understanding, compassionate. So there's always something good about every situation. And let's do our best to find that something when we feel down, when we feel angry, when we feel depressed. I hope you enjoyed this routine and I would love to hear what you think, how it went, what was your favorite affirmation, what was your favorite pose in the comments below. If you enjoy what I do, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you soon.